Power Query is a nightmare where we want to combine data, but that data has different column names. And it's even worse when those columns aren't in the same order. Can we even combine that data? You bet we can. And that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. So here we are in Power Query and we have two queries already loaded. We have our Excel workbook query and our find replace query. Inside the Excel workbook query, we've connected to an Excel workbook, which contains three sheets. If we look at that first sheet, you can see at the bottom, it has columns of item, region and value, but those column headers haven't been promoted yet. If we look at the next table, you can see that we have columns of product, region and value. So now column one that was called item is now called product. Finally, we have our third worksheet. It's now called item, value and division. So what was region is now called division and also our columns are in a different order. So this is the data that we want to combine. We have different column names, but also those columns are in a different order. Now, if the columns were in the same order, we could just click the combine icon. We could combine those columns together and that would give us our data so that all we would need to do is to remove the header rows. However, this doesn't work when our columns are not in the same order. So this is the problem that we are going to solve. Also in our queries list, we have a find and replace table. It contains the word product and then item and then division and region. And that's because later on, we'll see that we want to replace the column name product with the column name item and the column name division with the column name region. So that's our example data. Now let's see how we can solve this problem. So the first step that we want to undertake is to promote the headers inside each of our tables. At the moment, the headers are column one, column two, and column three, and we want our first row to become our header row. Now promote headers does not hard code any of those column names. So the fact that we have different column names in the other tables will not cause us any problems. Now we are going to write all of the M code ourselves in this video, but don't worry, I'll talk you through each of the arguments. Let's start by clicking on the FX icon to add a new step. You can see there it's automatically inserted source, and that is the name of the previous step. We will be using that in a few moments time, so let's leave that there. Now we want to transform our nested table. So we want to transform the data inside each of these tables. For that, we're going to use the table.transformColumns function and then declare that we want to make the transformation on the data column. So I'll start by typing table transform columns. I can see it there in the IntelliSense. So I'll select it and then open the bracket. The first argument is the table. That is the source from the previous step. So we'll accept that and I'll press comma to move on to the next argument. Now transform operations is a confusing argument. So just follow along with this syntax. This argument is a list, but it's also a list of a list. Therefore, we want to include double curly brackets. The first element that we want in that list is the name of the column that we want to perform this transformation on, and that is our data column. So I'll enter data. The second argument is the function that we want to perform on that data column. Well, the function that we want to perform is actually on each of our nested tables. Therefore, I'm going to use the word each. So that means it will conduct this on a row by row basis. So on each row, I want to perform the table dot promote headers transformation. We can see it there in the IntelliSense. I'll press tab to accept that. And then I'll open the bracket on the table dot promote headers function. This function has one argument. It asks for the table. Now we want to apply this to our nested table. Therefore, we're going to use the underscore. So each and underscore helps us to reference the individual item for each row. Then finally, let's declare the data type that we're expecting out of this action. And that is of type table. Okay, let's close our bracket. And now let's commit that function. Let's take a look. You can see inside each of those tables, that our header row has been promoted. So that's the first step complete. Now let's move on and look at how we can rename those column headers. Okay, so having promoted our header in the previous step, 
we're now ready to transform the column names. And we're going to use that same table.transform columns function. So I'll click on the FX icon. Our previous step was called custom one. We haven't renamed that, we probably should, but let's leave it as it is for this example. And again, I'll search for table, transform columns. It's there in the IntelliSense, table.transform columns. I'll press tab to accept that. And then I'll open the bracket and the first argument is the table and that is the name of our previous step. So I'll enter a comma to get to the transform operations. And we're going to use the same syntax as before. So curly bracket, curly bracket. The first element in that list is our column name, which is data. The next element in that list is the function that we want to perform on that data column. Well, again, we want to perform this on a row by row basis for each nested table. So I'll use the keyword each. And now we can enter the function to rename our columns. So there we have it, table.rename columns. I'll press tab to accept that. We'll then open the bracket on our table.rename columns. And the first argument is the table that we want to perform this transformation on. Well, we want to perform it on each nested table. Therefore, we're going to use the underscore character again. So that means with each and underscore, it will work on a row by row basis inside our data column. The next argument is the renames list. Now again, this is a list of lists. So I'll create the first list with a curly bracket and then the second list with a curly bracket. And in here, we enter the pair of names, the old column name and the new column name. So in table two, we have a column that's called product. And we want to rename that to item so it's the same as our first table. Okay, so that finishes our table.rename columns. Then after that, we'll declare the output type of type table. And then we can close our table.transform columns function. Okay, let's take a look. You can see in table two, it's correctly renamed product to item, but it's created an error in table one and also in table three. And that's because they didn't include a column called product. So that means we can turn to a secret argument, which is the missing field dot ignore argument. So after our list of column renames, I'll enter another argument and there you can see missing field. So what do we do if there's a missing field? Well, for the missing field, we want to ignore it. So let's take a look now. All of our tables look acceptable. They don't say error. We can click down those tables and they all seem to work correctly. So that means that now we can expand our column list. So it was product and item, but we also had division and region. And actually that should be a list. So let me go in and add the brackets around that. So anytime we want to add any more pairs of columns, we should add those in curly brackets. Right, we've now renamed all of those columns. So I'm going to select my data column, right click, remove other columns, and then we can expand that column. Click OK. We don't want to use the original column name as prefix. Fantastic. And that's now combined all of that data from those three tables. In the last section, we managed to rename the columns inside each of the nested tables, but we had to write out that list ourselves. Now that might become slightly cumbersome, especially if we have a lot of column names. So this is why we have our find replace table. In here, we have a column of the column names we want to find and the column names that we want to replace them with. So let's come back to our query. Let's come back to our step where we provided that list of column names. And we're going to use the list.zip function. So list.zip, we'll open the bracket on that function. And this again is a list of lists. So we'll open the bracket to create our first list. Now the thing is that a table column is also a list. So if we provide find replace as our table name and find as the column name in square brackets, that is a list of the items that we want to find. I'll enter a comma and then from that same table, so from find replace, we can search for the replace column and that is also a list. So therefore using list.zip with two column names inside 
and those column names surrounded by one set of curly brackets create a list of lists. There we go, our tables still have the correct column names and our data still expands correctly. So now rather than hard coding a list of names, it can be replaced based on a table. And if you look in the example workbook, you'll see that this table is from Excel. So we can easily add new records in there if we get any new data with any new column names. And there you go, that's it. Now it doesn't matter what our column names are or what order those columns are in, we can still clean that data by providing a list of what the column names were and what we want those column names to become. If you like what we teach, why not head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our training program. We'd love to have you in there. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.